The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host. Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terminas on Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. Today we're going to have a first on OA Now. Um, three football coaches calling in. Um, we got one from the red division, one from the white division, and one from the blue division. So... Without further ado, let's start with the Red Division. We got the coach of the Stony Creek Cougars, of course, Coach Nick Merlo. Coach, thank you for calling in this week. And um, also, um, and also, have you thought about going to, up to Marquette this weekend? <laughs> That's right. Thanks for having me on, Sammy. Really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at Stony Creek last year, I mean, last year you guys went 5-5. Five and five. Um, You went on 1-4 in the Red. Um Made the playoffs, lost to Rochester 21-20 on a tough, tough, tough loss. I mean, tough extra point with about no time left. Um, and previously, you beat Rochester 43-22 in, um, in week eight. So talk about last season for you guys, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a way. Yeah, last year uh, we had some really good seniors that, uh, stepped up and played really, really well that we're going to miss. But as our philosophy is, next man up. And we're really looking forward to this season and learning from a lot of the mistakes we made last year and to improve ourselves and getting ready for 2023. When you look at, la when you look at of course, the mistakes, obviously, you know, you know playing in a tough division like the Red, um, and it's not going to be easy this year. Um Talk about, you know, and I think when you look at the games last year, you know, when you were in those, all four of your losses when you got in the postseason, we're the OA Red opponents. It's true. And, true. Uh, mm -hmm. and then you look at um, how has the team been doing this offseason? I think that's one of the big questions we, um, we like to know about around the league, obviously, is how's your team doing? Um, any players to know about? Obviously, we know your offensive line is loaded with proven talent, especially you have a D one prospect in the, um, in the line, but like, how's your skill position players doing this off season? They're working really hard. Uh, we have, uh, some great senior leadership in those groups and running back wide receiver, tight end and, and quarterback are all led groups and looking forward to seeing what they can do. Several of them are, two or three year starters on the varsity or will be two or three year starters on the varsity. So we have extremely high expectations for them. Um, any, well, any, any, um, any names, you know what I mean? That, um, that you want to give out the OA nation about the, um, about, um, any names like who could be like some players to watch for this upcoming season. Yes. Yeah, so you mentioned Jake Kropchek already. Yep. Who is really committed to Toledo. He's having an awesome off season and working extremely hard to be a two-way player for us, but his partner in crime on the offensive line, Roman Lambert, who will also be a three-year starter for us on the offensive defense line, uh, has done a great job this off season. Really proud of both of them. Um, we have some movement too in the offensive line. We're, we'll start some some juniors. We're also moving some of our tight ends down uh, to play offensive line to give us uh, some more senior leadership in those spots. Um, like Patrick O'Day, he's looking great. He's doing an awesome job for us. Very selfless player to give up maybe catching the cold passes to playing the offensive line to help the team out. And, of course, uh, tight end Adam Bozzi is a really good linebacker for us as well. Jade McCarthy playing quarterback for us. Kyle Parks, Wesley Cyrilnik, Sam Fogler, and Asher Lakowski, kind of those uh, – those uh, running back committee kind of guys. And then wide receiver, Rex Shackelford, Jonah, <laughs> Jonah McKay, and Andrew Napolitano, all guys returning starters. So I'm um, really looking forward to seeing what they do. Great young men um, have done a great job this offseason and just looking forward to continue to get better every day. When you look at, of course, how's the program strength? Obviously, when we look at, of course, the sub varsity teams, obviously. We know the feeder system at heart. Um, how is the um, 
How's your program strength been doing, of course, with the underclassmen um, programs down there, the freshman and JV teams? Yeah, you know, we have great families and a great community that really love football. We have awesome staffs on each level that love the game and teach it the right way. And the development of our kids from, you know, youth football all the way up, uh, they just get better and better every week, every, every year. And um, just really thankful for the guys that, spend time coaching in our programs and really buy into our culture and our system. And, uh, you know, I think the thing that we pride ourselves on is continue to work as hard as we can and, you know, developing each and every day. Um, when you look at a course, you know, and also Stony Creek has been known for having special games. Of course, the dairy, um, the dairy game, I call it, you know what I mean? Of course, I know you have that, um, you have that, game you know what i mean that real special game where players wear different type of uniforms and all that um yeah the yep talk about that you know what i mean obviously who's your opponent gonna be this year for that game and you know and um and um what does it do yeah so this year we're playing in the honor of the yellow ribbon fund Mm -hmm. the yellow ribbon fund is a post 9 11 uh veteran organization that helps individuals uh as well as their families to make sure that they're taken care of if they're at walter reed hospital or if they need any other um you know support or resources and it's just an awesome program Mm -hmm. trying to uh, bring awareness to this great organization as well as raise funds for us this year we'll be uh, wearing the red white and blue jerseys and that will be against oxford we're just really looking forward to supporting the yellow ribbon fund. that'll be interesting um that'll be very very interesting um it always is you know when you have those type of games um to um to um to honor those you know what i mean let you know and especially wearing your um red white and blue jerseys the um you know I, it's gonna be very interesting i mean like i mean like it's gonna be interesting to see i mean great it's a great cause you know what i mean it is a great great cause um Let's look at your schedule. I mean, obviously, when you look at your schedule this year, it's kind of the same as last year, except you're putting Harper Woods in there instead of Detroit Mumford. Um, talk about, you know, opening up week one against a very athletic and talented team like the Pioneers. Um, it'll be very interesting. Yeah, they're a good team. Well coached, returning a lot of players. It's going to be a definitely a challenge for our players and, um, and our coaches. But, you know, when you play in the way red, I mean, you play the best of the best anyway. So why not add one more great team to your schedule? Um, and that's not going to be an easy game, I'll tell you that much right now, especially with what um, Coach um, Rob Odin's done over there. Even though their first year was kind of a struggle for them, um, now, you know what I mean, year two in the OA, a little bit more experience under the belt. Um, it'll be a really interesting test, that'll be for sure. Um, no, no doubt. Mm-hmm. And then you have some games last year. You have a rematch with Bloomfield Hills. Um, I th- they, I think they come to your place this year. Um, we'll be at Bloomfield. Oh, you'll be at Bloomfield. So I apologize. You know what I mean. So you played Bloomfield Hills last year and won that game. Um, what do the Blackhawks bring that's going to bring a challenge to you guys? Well, they're a well coached team that does multiple things, especially in the past game. And, uh, you know, when you play away in the OAA, anything can happen. So we got to bring our, we got to bring our very best. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And then you have, of course, um, before I talk Rochester, there's a lot of history with Rochester and you guys, um, talk about New Baltimore and Bay. I mean, last year you had to win that game to get in the playoffs and you did, um, knocking off a really good TARS team. Well, coach and coach Mike Gioni, um, talk about, and then you have to go to New Baltimore this year. It makes it going to be much tougher. So talk about the Tars a little bit in your eyes. Yeah, they're a really good team. They're returning good players. And again, like we said earlier, like we, we face the best of the best. Mm-hmm. So we have to be ready each and every week and bring our best each and every week. I think a perfect, yeah, definitely, I think a perfect quote. I think, I think they're going to do really well. Mac Red this year. I think a perfect quote for you is from Ric Flair. You know, to be the man, you got to beat the man. You know what I mean? That's a good, yeah, no doubt. that's a good no slogan. That's a good slogan. Um, 
Let's talk Rochester. I mean, obviously, we know the history that you have. Of course, your dad coached there. You were an assistant there and a teacher there. Um, so it's kind of like developed into a nice little rivalry. I mean, it's kind of developed into, ri into a rivalry. I mean, like, obviously, of course, you've been on both sides of it. So talk about the Rochester rivalry from your own eyes. Yeah, I mean, obviously, anytime you play someone from your own your own city, you know, there's bragging rights on the line for your kids, and um, you got nothing but respect for Rochester and Coach Vernon over there. You know, they really helped in my development and gave me opportunities, and I couldn't be more thankful for that. And um, I think the biggest thing for us is just taking things a week at a time and making sure that we're prepared for uh, all of our opponents, but the same. But at the same time, you know, giving value to those rivalries and and just enjoying those because it's pretty special in our town when, you know, we play Adams, we play Rochester, you know, the towns come out and it's really fun and it's a great experience for our kids, our families. It's pretty awesome. Speaking of that, talk about the Adams rivalry. I mean, like, I know Adams has had, um, has had your guys' number in the past, but, um, but, every, but you've had some wins against them. I mean, obviously, I remember... I remember, I think it was 20, I think it was 2020 when you guys knocked off um, Adams. And, um, you know, I remember that team really well. Um, mm -hmm. So when you look at playing Adams, I mean, what's your thoughts of playing the Highlanders on a consistent basis? Yeah, I mean, they're a historic program that has a great system in place. And they run the ball well, they stop the run well, and they have good special teams. And, you know, that's, that's what we intend to do every, each and every week as well, is to run the football, stop to run, and, and cover kicks. And so when you play a well-coached team that works really hard and that plays really hard, it's uh, always a challenge. But we look forward to it every year. And um, it's, uh, again, one of those inner-city rivalries that brings the whole community out. It's good for the players, their families, and our entire community. And they run the veer too, which that makes it really hard to stop. You know that, you know. Yeah, you know, and, and they and they typically put one of their better players every year at that quarterback position to run it for them, and they do a great job with that. Mm hmm. Um. Let's look at the rest of the red. I mean, obviously, in your eyes, you got, you know, what what's your thoughts? I'm gonna give you a thought on each team. You know what I mean? And you know what I mean? And what's your thoughts on each team in this division? Um. Let's start with West Bloomfield. I mean, obviously, new coach Zach Hilbers. Very talented team. So, what's your initial thoughts when you on the Lakers? Yeah, obviously they're they're going to be talented and skilled, but at the same time, you know, they're bringing in a coach that's been there for a long time that obviously loves and cares for that high school and the program. So they're going to be no doubt tough to beat. What about Oxford? I mean, of course, you know the Wildcats. You know, last year they had some struggles. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they they got to change this year, quarterback especially. Mm -hmm. And then, so what's your initial thoughts on the Wildcats? Yeah, similar similar concept, right? They have a coach that's an alumni that loves and cares for that community. That's going to bring a great product out every single week. And they got kids that play hard. And I know they were young last year, and so they're going to be a really good squad. Um, What about Clarkston? Clarkson's Clarkson's Clarkson. They're they're gonna reload and they have a couple of really good seniors coming back and so we gotta make sure that uh we're well coached up on that uh zone they run offensively and make sure we limit big plays and make sure we're playing with them in the fourth quarter. Lake Orion. Mm -hmm. Lake Orion this is supposed to be the year, right? You you know them well, right? Mm hmm So um you know, I thought we played them, um, you know, played them at our place last year. It's going to be at their place this year. And, uh, yeah, that's it's the team to beat, I think, in the way you're at. It'll be very interesting to see. I mean, obviously, when you look at um, when you look at the um, red this year, obviously, you know what I mean, breaking down the schedule, um, looking at the um, expectations. Um, when you look at Stony Creek, I always think of them, you know, I always think tradition. I mean, like I remember you guys do the walk before, um, before the game. You always do the, um, you always like. So, what is so any any changes at all? You know, any uniform changes or anything we gotta know about? 
I know you're big into uniforms, Sammy, and the, the helmets especially we got. We'll have a surprise for you later in the year. Really? Keep it a secret. Oh, yeah, Sammy. Really? Keep it a secret from you, yep. You're keeping it a secret from me. <laughs> yep, just look for it in the last, well, one of the last three uh, weeks of the year, okay? It's not like it's not like the Detroit Lions, you know what I mean? Obviously, you remember what they did. I mean, like, with their new helmet, you know, the blue Sammy, helmet. I, Sammy, I promise you, you'll love it. Woo, I should. I hope I do. Um, you will. Um, obviously, when you look at, um, obviously, when you look at you guys coming in, um, there's a lot of expectation. There's a lot of, um, you know, for Stony Creek this year. Um, well, I mean, people have already, I think I've looked at the media and they, they haven't really given you guys much of a shot. So what's your, um, what's your, what would you say the naysayers out there? Doesn't really matter to us, Sammy. I know. We're going to worry about ourselves. ourselves. We're going to get better each and every day. We're going to become closer as a team. And that's high school football. It's some of the best times these young guys will ever have in their life. We're just trying to provide an opportunity for them to be successful on the field. And just really love this group. Great young men. And they're looking forward to spending uh, the next several months with them. Talk about the arm of culture. Obviously, you know, we talked about this many times. You've been on the pod many times. Talk about to our viewers who are new to this what the armor up culture is. Yeah, it's just it's just our foundation of culture. It's a never give up mantra that helps center ourselves on what we're all about all together, you know. And uh, I think for us, it's the consistency to make sure that we have buy in from not only all of our players but coaches in the arm up culture. And the goal at the end of the day is to create elite men of character. And to have those relationships, both player to player, player to coach, and coach to coach, uh, for a lifetime. So uh, it's never been stronger. These young men have done a great job this offseason building the culture uh, through the many activities that we do. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that show up on Friday nights this fall. Before I let you go, Coach, um, what is your expectations this year? Obviously, you know, um, what? Obviously, you know. Bouncing back from last season. So what is your expectations this year for your team? Yeah, expectations for our guys we talk we talk about all the time. It's really simple. It's to show up every day with an awesome attitude, to enjoy playing with your best friends, the greatest game in the history of the world, and to give everything you have. And when those things are accomplished, all the wins will take care of itself. So we're just really looking forward to this, this fall. You know, I... And, and, and I talked about this. I mean, like, I hope your I hope your dad's just not taking it too hard. That will happen the Oakland County Middle School meet. I wonder if he's talked to you about that meet. <laughs> All right, guys, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go get water, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just he's uh, huh? he's uh, sorry, I'm breaking up with you, Sammy. It's all right. Mm-hmm. You there? <laughs> All right, um, Stony Creek coach Nick Merlo here on the podcast. Um, obviously, I'm um, he apologized for um, you know, we apologize. Um, a lot of expectations for Stony Creek. Um, obviously, when you look at the Cougars, um, you know, um, there's a lot of expectations this year. Um, for them, and I think they're going to be very good. I mean, like, I think they're going to be a solid team. I mean, so we'll see what happens going forward when you look at Stony Creek. All right now we're gonna come back here. We're gonna talk about um, we're gonna talk to Seaholm, um, Coach Jim Dewald, on the podcast here on OA Now. All right, welcome back to OA Now. Here I'm Sammy Timmy here. Um, this week we got Seaholm, Coach Jim Dewald. Coach, um, I see you were working out and working out. I mean, like, how is everything doing? I haven't talked to you in a while. Things going well. Yeah, you caught me during a workout, so oh, cool off my heart right here. <laughs> Everything's going well. Summer's going really well. Um, kids are working hard and looking forward to this season. Talk about last year. I mean, you went eight and three, three and one. The blue had a really tough loss to Groves. Um, we're going to talk Groves yeah. in a couple minutes. Yeah. So, talk about recapping last season a little bit for you. Well, I thought we had a really good team last year, and uh, I really did. I thought we were, you know, we had a good combination of being big and strong up front with with some skill positions and. Obviously, it reflected on our record. Um, you know, losing in the second round Groves there, you know, it's not fun, but 
Um, it's frustrating, but they, they got us. And, uh, you know, we were hoping to go a little, little further than that, but uh, chips fall where they fall, right? Yeah, they do. I mean, like, and, you know, we're going to talk robes in a couple minutes here. I mean, like, because I've looked at a, and it's a real rough trend for you guys. I mean, like, you know, so we're going to talk about that rivalry with Groves and um, your initial thoughts. Um, talk about, of course, your team. Obviously, the Kinney brothers, Colton and Graydon, um, you know, what they've been for you guys this this um, off season and also this season. Yeah, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're you know, they're extremely smart football players. Um, you know, uh, athletics is a huge part of who they are. Uh, through baseball and football and um, they're students of the game and they're fun to coach because it's really like having a second coach on really both sides of the ball out in the field so you know they do a really good job of you know understanding the game plan memorizing the game plan and then hopefully uh you know executing it um talk about of course when you look at the veer i mean like the veer is one of the most lethal offenses in in the state of michigan um any other players, you know what I mean? Like any other impact players that we need that OI Nation needs to know about when you look at Seahome? Yeah, well, we have Sean Ener- Emerson uh, coming back for us. He's a he's just the all football kid, um, and he's uh, he's been a slide. He actually started this first game as a freshman for us and blew his knee out the very very first season or the very, very first series of the first game. Yikes! So he missed he missed that whole freshman year and he had a good sophomore year and. Had a good year last year. This year will be a senior. We're moving him to our what we call our B-back, our running back position. He was a slot for us, and he's a safety. Kyle Robbins, another kid that we pulled up as a freshman later on in his freshman year to, to help us out with some depth. And, uh, you know, he's a you know he's extremely athletic kid, uh, multiple sport kid, um, another smart kid that understands what's going on on both sides of the ball. So, you know, those guys are, are doing a really good job and, you know, look forward to see what they can do. How's, how is the line up front? I mean, obviously, when you look at Seahome, one of the things I've been very concerned about, you know, when I've looked at my notes and everything, has been, you know, of course, up front. The offensive line, the defensive yeah. line. I mean, yeah. also depth well, and program strength has been one of my concerns. Yeah, we uh, we're, we lost a lot up front, I'm not going to lie, from last year. So we have a work cut out to fill those positions out. Um, but we have uh, Luke Thurswell and – and uh, Brad, oh, excuse me, uh, Blake Paulner, um, you know, the returning starters on the offensive side of the ball. And they're going to have to, we're going to have to rely on them to go a little bit more two ways this year. We have some other guys that are going to be seniors that can come up. Luke Johnson's a guy that we can go. Akram, Elshin Arby can be a guy up front for us. So we have some guys that we can place in, but no, no doubt that's going to be, you know, a big concern for us moving forward. How's the program? I mean, program strength has been another one of my major concerns when I look at Seahome. I mean, like, so how's the program been doing this off season? Our, uh, well, I'll be honest with you, Sammy. I think our off season is always great. Uh, mm-hmm. Weight room is, uh, I think our culture of our weight room is, is second to none. Uh, it's phenomenal. It's always that way. You know, it just depends on what kids we get. Um, we're not a school that goes out and recruits and we just get whatever comes to our door and, you know, it depends on that bubble of kids. Some kids all choose to go to other schools when they come into ninth grade. Some choose to come here. And when we have a bunch of players that choose to stay in their their district and stay in their where they're supposed to go to school, uh, not get recruited out of here, mm-hmm. we're pretty good. When we don't, we struggle. But our, our off season, our weight room is phenomenal. Whether we're bad or good, we're, our kids work really hard. They're accountable. Uh, I love working with them. Um, but the big thing is, is, you know, getting the kids that we're supposed to get. And that's always the that's the biggest concern. So you see ups and downs. It's the truth is, we get kids recruited out of here. That's a fact. Yep, and that's unfortunate. Um, when you look yeah, at it, yes, yeah, I know it is. I know it is. Um, let's look at, of course, um, let's look at your rivalry with your rivalries. I mean, rivalry with Groves. Obviously, this is where I know it gets a little a little touchy here. When you look at the stats, yeah. it doesn't look. I mean, I've noticed in the stats. Groves has won 12 of 14 against you guys. And it's, that is not a good trend. Um, and they beat you guys twice last year. Um, so what has been the problem when you take on coach Flurry's team, you know, and your rivals from 13 mile? Well, 
it's frustrating a couple of years. You sit there and all the guys that score against us have addresses that's supposed to go to see home. That's frustrating at one point. Um, but off that to the side, you know, Flaherty does a good job with the program. They're really well coached. Um, I imagine their off seasons are, are as just as good as ours. Um, I know he's got a good coaching staff and they do, uh, you know, I know they work hard, uh, but it's very, very, very frustrating watching kids that belong in our school, in their school scoring against us. So, um, but they got our number. Uh, we got to beat them and they're doing a really good job of beating us right now. Um, of course, then when you look at, um, and of course, you know, I look at the division, the blue, you guys are, you guys are in the blue. I'm a, you know, I'm a little, little surprised in what my initial thoughts was, but you know, um, but when you look at the division you're in, um, we're going to, I'm going to talk to you about your non-conference, also the teams in your conference, the, in the blue division. Um, so let's start with the non-conference. I mean, you do play Bloomfield Hills this year. Um, what is your initial, you do play Bloomfield Hills to open up the year. So what's your initial, yeah. so what's your initial thoughts on playing the Blackhawks first? Um, you know, I think it's a, it's a, you know, Dan does a good job over there and, you know, obviously I coached in that district years ago and, uh, um, I think it's just a natural little good fit. We, you know, they're out, they're out the road of only a couple miles. Um, you know, we had a really good game last year. They had a couple big plays on us early on and kept the game close. And I think over time we were able to, to wear them down a little bit, but, uh, you know, they did a good job and I know they lost, you know, they lost their quarterback and the big, uh, big receiver. So I don't know what they have coming back and, you know, we'll worry about that here in a couple of weeks. Um, when you look at, of course, that rivalry, you, you mentioned that rivalry um, with Bloopy Hills. Um, I remember the days when, you know, when Bloopy Hills were lost or in Andover. I mean, you remember going back to that, you know yeah. what I mean? So, you know, and Dan was at Bloopy Hills losser. So talk about, you know what I mean, how um, that rivalry's really increased, you know what I mean? That respect's there, but also that rivalry's still there. Yeah, I wish we could play a little bit more, but I mean, I, you know, Dan does a really good job. Like you said, he's been there forever. I mean, he might be the longest tenure coach in the LAA, and besides Petrino, Petrito and maybe Flaherty are the only ones that maybe haven't beat. But even then, I think Dan may have been at Bloomfield Hills longer than that. Mm -hmm. He does a good job. He does a really good job. You know, they're obviously a bigger school than us, so you can't play them year in, year out. Um, but, uh, you know, we, Dan and I always try to get together and play if we have two open dates. Uh, you know, we try to make things happen because I think it's just a natural fit, natural rivalry. Mm -hmm. um, now you open up, now you get to play a rematch with UD Jesuit. I remember that game last year, which that was a heck of a game between you two. I mean, like the Cubs, the Cubs are a very good team. Now you get to go down to UAD and play them. So what is your thoughts about having to play the Cubs? It was exciting. Obviously, it was last year. It was a, a fun game. Went into overtime, and it was a fun game to be a part of. And, and fortunately for us, we, we, we came out on top. Um, but just to be a part of that game was super fun. Um, they're, they're, they got a lot of good dudes. They got a lot of good dudes over there. And <laughs> and truthfully, we we lost just lost one of our best coaches to go over there to be an assistant coach. He retired from the public school system, so he took a job at U of D. And um, you know, so they're. Yeah, you know, not that we have many secrets for the five plays we run, but uh, now they may know a little bit more about us than we like. But uh, you know, they, they're they're athletic, they're good, um, and our job is just kind of execute. You know, and and you know, we, you know, when Coach Hill left. You know, he talked, man. I go, it doesn't matter. I mean, we have to execute. It doesn't matter. Most people know what we're doing. We we just must execute. Mm hmm. That'll be a heck of a game between you two over there down in UAD. I mean, like you know, it always has been when UAD takes on away schools. It'll be really interesting. I mean, two clash of different styles. I mean, of course, you guys yeah. won the Veer, UAD, of course, spread team. I mean, hey, like, hey, throw that ball over the park. Yep, it'll be interesting to see over there over at UAD. Um, yeah, Avondale. I mean, like, you guys play them this year. New coach. Yeah, yeah I don't. I don't know much about the new coach. I don't know much about what's going on over there. Um, I thought uh, Corey did a pretty good job last year. I, I thought the. Offensively, they had a pretty good system going, um, you know, and gave us some fits. And, uh, yeah, I don't know much about uh, the coach coming in. I don't coach know Bob Meyer? Yeah. He oh, used... is it? Okay. Yep. Yeah, he, he, yeah okay. Yep. Um, yeah, didn't, didn't know that. But uh, sometimes I'm not involved. But I'm not on social media, so I don't know all the ins and outs of everything. So. Yeah, I mean, like, I've known I've known Coach Meyer when he was at Wall Lake Central and also at Livonia Clarenceville. I mean, like, okay. so yeah. give me a heads up. You know, likes to run that. He likes to spread you out. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. <laughs> so. Yeah. 
Yeah. Join the club. Everyone else likes to spread us out too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we talked robes already. Um, no, I mean, no X's O's about that. Um, Berkeley, what is your thoughts on playing on um, the Bears um, this season? Yeah, I, um, you know, once again, I don't know. You know, last year I, I maybe they struggled all uh, last year. Hopefully, um, you know, maybe get some pieces back and they can uh, get some things going. Um, I don't, I don't know much about what they had down their pipeline, but uh, last year was a game that got out of hand pretty quick. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll definitely see that each each week is exciting and uh yeah, I, don't, I don't want to say any good or bad because i just i don't know much about them personally uh and mm -hmm. their lower levels and all that stuff so mm -hmm. all right let's talk to blue now obviously your division um we're gonna start with oak park um when you look at the knights um coming down from the white what is your initial thoughts early on about playing coach greg carter's team uh just trying to get a win against that guy he just he seems to kick our butt we uh yearly so um you know, I know they were down a little bit last year. Um, I don't know. Once again, I'm not sure what they what they have coming back. Uh, but you know, obviously, Coach Carter does a really good job over there, and 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 uh, they usually are well coached. And and what you know, we'll know what's going on. And and uh, so I, I don't know if they have guys coming back. So I, I saw them last year on tape. It looked like they were, you know, lost some of the physicality that uh, that we've seen in the past from up front. I think that it seemed as though. Uh, when we were watching them versus opponents, uh, uh, we, I think they just lacked some of the stuff up front. Okay, what about North Farmington? Obviously, when you talk the Raiders, you know, you got to think the Harrison connection when you look at North Farmington. Yeah. yeah. Well, John does a good job over there. Um, it, we we had a battle with them last year. I mean, a battle. They did a really good job. They jumped out of their traditional 50 front, got into a four front with us. A little bit, which was uh, I was shocked. I, I I didn't think in the in the whole wide world that we'd ever see them out of a 50 front, but they jumped into a 40. Um, you know, and they did a really really good job. And their quarterback was lights out last year. Uh, I can't remember the kid's name. It wasn't Shelby. It wasn't Ryan Shelby. No, no, it was, it was a backup. Kid. Yeah, Tanner. Yeah, so all, yeah. yeah. And then and he had a game, um, a really good game. Because I think the the other kid came back the, the week after, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Um. And then, yeah, we had a, I think we were down by, yeah, we were down the score real late and we had to drive the field with like two minutes to go, which we're not really great at in our offense, but we were able to do it to score and then and secure the win. So it's been a tough battle against those guys every year they do. Obviously, you know, they're really well coached and they got some kids over there that can play football. So that's, uh, that's going to be a good game. I remember watching that game on Farmington TV 10 really well last year, both your games against both Farmington schools. Yeah. Um, and they were intense. Both those games were just absolutely just intense. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, like, so that was really interesting to see there um, when you watch those games, especially against North Farmington and Farmington, both yeah. those two teams. Yeah. Um, Troy Athens. I mean, this one, this was interesting. You know, you and you and Troy Athens have had some battles in the past. Yeah, yeah. Um... You know, last year, um, you know, they had a new coaching staff in there last year, and I think they're trying to get the things going. And I think a couple of those guys were hurt last year versus our game. I think their quarterback didn't play, um, so they struggled on offense mightily versus us. And that, you know, it wasn't, you know, it was not because of what we were doing. It's just, you know, the quarterback was hurt, and they had to put a backup quarterback in that couldn't really throw the ball really well. Um, but uh, you know, they're. We'll see what they got coming up. I don't. I don't know much more about them than that. Uh, like I said, it was more so they had some injuries when they played us last year. And then the last team we're talking about is Troy. Um, what is your initial thoughts on the Colts? Obviously, you know I have. Um, you know when you look at Troy, I know they've been really good in the past, but yeah. but but the schedule. -y. <laughs> but what's your thoughts on the Colts? Um, you know, Chris does a good job over there. They got, uh, seems like they've got the numbers uh, up pretty well. They, a, they, have to, they do a good job on their offensive system. Um, and they do a pretty good job of jumping different fronts on us on defense. Um, you know, and it was a, it was a little bit of a battle and, uh, I know, you know, their JV team, uh, this last year. Oh no, I think we tied their JV team last year. So it should be a pretty good little battle going forward. I mean, those guys moving up, our guys moving up. So it should be a good battle. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, obviously, when you look at how is the, um, you know, how is the, um, J how is the, um, fresh incoming freshman class going to look? How's the, um, how's your JV going to look this upcoming season? Um, we're going to be pretty young. 
we got the, you know, we, we got some, uh, holes to fill in the lower levels. Um, I think, like I said, I think we have enough pieces this year on varsity to, to do some, some good things this year. Um, you know, moving forward, we really need some, we need some weight room, um, that, you know, that, that culture in the weight room has got to amplify some of these kids, get them a little stronger, faster, some of these young freshmen, sophomores, but they're working hard. I'm, I'm, I can't be more pleased with them. And our numbers are up, you know, way up for us. Uh, we have 82 in the program last year. We were like 67. So we're up numbers wise, which is a good thing. That's good. Hopefully get, yeah. Hopefully we can get three teams, um, this year. If we can stay healthy through uh, August and see what that looks like. And if we can get three pro, uh, teams rolling, that'd be good. Cause we haven't had three teams in, I don't know, I'd say probably at least four years or so. So um, the the numbers are pretty good, and uh, that's exciting. Any changes to the uniforms and all that? Because, you know, I'm in the uniform guy. Ah, you are the uniform guy. So I like this, Sammy. We, we, we ordered new uniforms this year, um, just the, the Nike stock. And uh, Nike, whatever the reason, you know, I think all our stuff's made in China, whatever it takes for it to get over here. But, mm-hmm. The uniform we ordered wasn't coming in, so we had to go to uh, an all maroon, completely stock Nike jersey, and we're just going to logo up the sleeves with our S and maple leaf. So I love the all maple look. Yeah, I love yeah, the all all maroon. The all maroon. I love that. Yeah. You know because Not what we wanted, but <laughs> no, I actually do because I think it's like you know, just imagine you know, imagine imagine you guys you know at home in front of the forest. Um, wearing all maroon, you know, name plates in the back. You guys would look very good in that. Um, have you thought about yeah. going all white on the road? Well, we do go the all white. We do go the all white. We just have the the uh, red, uh, the maroon uh, piping down the sleeves, which we'll still have. Mm-hmm. Uh, getting the, those actually came in, so we were were uh, same. The white uniform is the exact same as it was the last two years. Um, that's coming in here shortly. Mm-hmm. Um, but another big thing is you talk about the home game is, you know, we have that a- athletic facility at the end of our stadium. Now yes. it's just, I mean, it's, it's almost done. I mean, we're getting the keys here in a couple of weeks. It's beautiful. And it's just, as you know, we don't have a track around the stadium. So, right. And you got the hill on the one side with the scoreboard. So, and right. then now you got this big athletic complex on the other. It looks like it's a enclosed little college, uh, uh, a stadium. It's just really cool. It's beautiful. Oh, I'm, I've looked forward to look going inside that in your facility. I mean, you know, I would look, I'm looking forward to going inside that facility. Um, really excited yeah. to see that. Um, before I let you go, coach, um, what is your, um, expectations heading into the season, um, for C home football? Well, I expect us to make the playoffs. I really do. I think we have a, enough veteran leadership and enough veteran guys on the skill side and, Obviously, everyone's going to say the same thing as we stay healthy. I think we'll be we'll be fine. I think we should get into the playoffs. Um, I would like us to get into the six, seven win category. Um, and there's going to be some tough competition. There's some other ones that I think we'll be okay in, but uh, um, I, I'm looking forward to it and just see how we gel. Um, I, I, you know, obviously, as we talked, we have to figure out what's going on up front, and obviously, that one is is going to be. Uh, you know, the depth is going to be big time lacking up front. So we can't, we got to stay healthy and we got to treat those guys, get them right now so they can make the full season. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd have, uh, I'd be very shocked if we didn't make the playoffs. I would be too. I mean, like obviously when I'm working on my preview for the blog and all that, you know, before I'm, I'm really, really high on you guys this year. Um, Honestly, you know, when I look at Seaholm, I mean, like, you know, I think, you know, when you look at the division that you guys are in, I think it's a winnable division for you guys. And it's going to be challenging. Yeah, it's going to be challenging, yeah. but no question. It'll be fun. We have, a third, we have a quarterback that's going to be a third year starter. Yeah, and, and I think I, that's a lot of that. You know, that. It's huge. I mean, I can't, a first year quarterback, and it takes him three games to start to understand what's going on when those bullets are flying a million miles an hour. But, you know, Colton is going to be a third-year starter, and and like I said, he is he is just as smart as any coach we have out there. He uh, he knows what's going on defensively. He understands what they're trying to do, and uh, so it's it's fun to coach him. It really is because he he gets it. So it's it's that'll be exciting to see what he does. I am looking forward to seeing see home this year. I I will see you at media day coming up. Um, thank you, co- thank you, Coach Jim D. Wall, head coach of See Home Maples. Um, thank you for calling Thanks, in. Sammy. Appreciate see you. Appreciate you calling. See you at media day, my friend. Take care. See you. Yep. Bye. Yep. Bye. That is Seahome coach Jim Dewald here um, on the pod here. Um, talking Seahome. Um, I'm a high on this team. I really am. So 
Really curious to see how Seaholm does this season. It'll be something to really watch for. All right, now when we come back, we're going to talk to Farmers coach Jason Albright here on OI Now. Welcome back to OI Now here. I'm Sammy Timmy here. We got our final coach today here calling in for us. It's Farmington coach Jason Albright. Coach, um, welcome to the podcast. Appreciate you having me on today. One thing I got to do before I, before we chat, we chat football, I got to owe you an apology for calling you Jim on um texting you calling you Jim on air. <laughs> not a not a problem. I uh I figured you were trying to get a hold of uh, a couple coaches and I figured DeWald was on that list. Yep, so I talked to him earlier. Um so now we get you. Um coach, um, you finish year at you finished last year at 6 and 4. Um won the blue last year. So you got the reward of having to go to the white. Um you you fell last year to, you went down to Monroe County. And went down to Temperance Bedford, um, took on the kicking mules. Um, how was, um, first of all, I mean, like, did you see Lake Erie on your, on your, on your way to Temperance? You know, uh, I don't believe so. I, uh, all I remember from the, we actually did a pretty cool thing where we, we got some charter buses that go down. So it was pretty cool for our kids to go down and it, it took us probably over an hour to get all the way down past, I think to, I think it was past 23 or 94. Like it was, it was a brutal uh, traffic uh, episode. So, yeah. I mean, like I remember that experience having to go down to Monroe a couple of years ago. That was not a fun experience. I'll tell you that much. I've had to go uh, down there at least three times. <laughs> yeah. There's, everybody who lives in Michigan kind of knows it's, it's when it's construction season, you got to add for extra time. That's for sure really don't have to look at it that bad when you go north, you know, north of like, um, north of the county line, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> but, um, anyway, um, last year, recap last year in your eyes, obviously you had a really good team a year ago. Um, talk about, you know what I mean? What your thoughts were last season, obviously, you know, you look at, um, taking home, getting the farm to cut back from last year. So talk about just your experience from last year. Yeah, you know, we had a, a great group of seniors that I I got to know from their sophomore year my, when I came back uh, to be an assistant at Farmington. And, you know, a lot of dedicated kids, a uh, handful of them are going to play in college. Uh, we had, you know, a uh, quarterback throw Dominic Pacey through for, I think, 13 to 1,500 yards, something like that. Um we had a really uh, – we had three returning offensive linemen. We had a running back rush for over 1,000 yards and have tons of multi-purpose yards in receiving and kick returns. And, um, you know, we we knew we, we had a, a group, especially with the, the group, um, the the juniors from last year, that we, we had a solid group together. And, you know, playing north, and we, that's an emotional battle and rivalry game. And, you know, we, we were able to – recover from a couple of mistakes that we made uh, on both sides of the ball and get it uh, blocked an extra point to actually get into uh, overtime and um, actually ended up getting an interception in overtime and, and scoring. So it was great to, uh, to get the jug back uh, on Shiawassee. And, um, you know, we, we go down and we beat Seaholm who was undefeated at the time. And, um, you know, that was a real big game for us. And then, um, you know, ultimately we, we share, we, we tied for the, the division, I guess you would say, cause we both had one loss and, um, you know, we kind of looking at the numbers we knew for the playoffs that, you know, it, we gar- we could have won out. We, we lost to Utica in week nine, but even if we would have won that, uh, we probably would have been third based on how the bracket was looking. So having to travel down to, Bedford, you know, it was a two, three hour bus ride based on traffic and go down and we, we were down early getting a feel for the, for what their offense was. And we ended up coming back at halftime, um, tying it up in the third and had a penalty call that kind of took the, the momentum out of our sales. But, um, you know, we had a couple kids get banged up in that game and, you know, ultimately it was, it was a year that I was proud of our kids and, you know, saw the work that they put in, in the off season and uh, kind of pay off and make a run in the playoffs. There's one play that I remember from that, from your team that really, and that was a, it was the camp Petaway touchdown against North that 
went, I think he went, I think 80 yards for that touchdown against North. I remember that one. Cause that was a, it was a, it was a big, big play. I thought oh, the, pass. the pass, my bad. I mean, that, that was, was probably, that was, I think it was probably, uh, it was, we were near the 50, um, threw him in, threw him a little route into the flat and he, uh, he, he did what he does. I mean, he's, he's a, one of the best athletes on the field at all time and uh, took it to the house. Talk about how camp's been doing this off season. Obviously when you look at, when you look at a course, um, you know, obviously, you know, you guys bringing in a new quarterback. So, I mean, before we talk pet away, how's your quarterback situation going? Um, I know there's another pesh pesh on the, um, over at Farmington. I know that. Uh, so right now we've got a, a junior and a senior kind of battling it out, mm -hmm. uh, for the, for the, uh, quarterback spot. So it's, you know, I always, I always joke and I say to coaches that, you know, seven on seven is not real football and you kind of get an idea on their decision-making a little bit as far as quarterback and where are they able to place the ball where it needs to without a pass rush. But, you know, it's it ultimately probably won't really be decided until we're in pads and, we're uh, watching scrimmage film to see how they uh, how they did, and um, you know, ba basically, it's it. We're just battling there, um, so it's really between those two at this point. Um, and that's going to be interesting. I'm curious to see how that quarterback battle is going to be, especially when you have to replace a um, a very very special quarterback like you guys have to do um, with Dom with Dom. I'm graduating. Um, it's not going to be an easy, it's not going to be easy for whoever the new quarterback is, you know, taking over week one. No. And it's, you know, you have a, a kid who started as a sophomore and Dom, you know, for the final, what, two games or whatever. And then basically he's been the mainstay for the last two years. Um, you know, it's, we kind of knew going into the off season, it was going to, uh, you know, we, we're not going to have Dom, Dom at quarterback and it's, both kids that we have have their own, you know, their own talent um, and strengths and weaknesses. And, you know, they might do different things uh, or things differently than how Dom did. So um, that's luckily I, I'm lucky to have coaches that are really working with our kids and, and we're putting together uh, packages that are going to really emphasize our strengths of our, of our team. Um, talk about, of course, obviously we talk, we got to talk cam obviously, but your offense. I remember last year you and I talked about your guys' offense, defensive line. I mean, like a lot of experience coming back on up front there. Um, talk about how's your offense defensive line situation going. So defensive line wise, we've got hand Well, We do a pretty good job of rotating kids on defense, um, to get them exposure and time, uh, experience, so we've got we've got a lot more coming back on defense um, than we do offense. We've got the uh, got one one kid coming back on the offensive line this year um, from the varsity. Uh, a couple kids that were on varsity last year that were you know were backups that got a, got some good rep, reps in practice. Um, but really, we've got some young kids that are really pushing our older kids uh, for playing time, and you know we don't have. We don't have Gavin Miller, who's, you know, 6'5", 300 pounds. Um, but luckily, we're not playing in college. And high school linemen don't need to be, you know, 250, 300 pounds. I've, I've had 185-pound guards that will really pull and smack you in the mouth and, and block with great leverage. And uh, so um, that's what we're really looking at, you know, making sure our kids understand the scheme and technique so that they can uh, – really take advantage of with their speed that they do have. How has Cam been doing this off season? Obviously, you know, we, I was going to talk a lot Cam Petaway, obviously. I mean, like, um, um, how, ha, how has he and the rest of the guys been doing this off season? They've been doing great. Um, you know, we've been doing our conditioning and lifting uh, program that we've carried on through the off season. Um, and he's been a kid who's, you know, been there working and, and leading, um, you know, we've, we've, we've had our seven on sevens and obviously he, he's excelled there. Um, he's, I know he's gone to a handful of camps, um, and gotten offers and, um, you know, he's do I mean, he's, he's a hardworking kid. He's, you know, kind of focusing more on football and, um, than he has in the past because he's, you know, he's a multi-sport athlete and, um, you know, he's really been just, you know, 
being that guy who kids can watch and see what happens when you put hard work in in the off season. Um, talk about your back end of your defense. Obviously, I'm looking at according to my notes, you guys are loaded in the back end of the defense. Um, talk about any talk about your impact players. Um, on that side of the ball. Uh, so we've got three of our four uh, on the back end coming back. Uh, Mikey Woods is a, a corner who's been a four-year varsity starter. Um, it, you know, he's – I say this, uh, you know, to coaches, it's, it's tough because like, they didn't throw at him a lot last year. Um, so it's tough to say like, he didn't have a ton of stats. Um, but, he, you know, he's a, he's a great kid in, in press and great hips and has some length to him, and he's a, a, a track kid that, uh, you know, make doesn't get burnt very easily. Um, I've got Owen Madison, one of our safeties that's started at, <clears throat> back there. He's kind of the, the general for me, um, you know, because he's been there starting since his sophomore year. Uh, so he's – I told him, like, once you're done, like, you're pretty much going to know everything that we can do in this defense because we haven't – every year it's we don't do everything we can. Um, but he's a, a kid who comes down and he'll he'll uh, he'll smack uh, smack kids in the run game is just real smooth in the pass game has good instincts and then Jane Vans a kid who started last year for us um, that is uh, you know he's he's a lanky kid track kid that you know comes down and will hit and and is really smart um, as far as you know path to the ball and and making sure that is uh, reads are you know him and the him and the uh the other dbs are on the same page um okay now we're gonna talk how's how's the um sub rc programs doing your freshman jv programs um how they how have they been doing uh so last year we only had a jv we uh i think they won five games five or mm-hmm. six um so i mean we did they did fine i mean they the biggest thing i i want my JV program to do is be able to have kids give a good experience and prepare them to be a varsity football player. And, um, you know, I've, my, our staff down there does a great job of, you know, breaking down and teaching so that they know what they're doing. Um, in fact, the other corners are going to probably end up being a kid who was on the JV last year, um, amongst some of the other, you know, kids that are going to fill in and starting roles and play a lot of snaps this year. Um, we're kids that played on JV and, understood what their you know reads are and how to how to be a football player um this year right right now it's it's always a crapshoot because you have kids sign up and then uh, you know we <laughs> we end up not seeing every kid that signs up and then maybe they change their mind but we have a, a large uh freshman class coming in it's, it's the, our our sophomore and junior group this year is not huge to the point where I'm comfortable at right now doing a, a straight three, three team program. Um, because we had some of those freshmen last year starting on JV and some of those kids are going to probably end up being with us this year. Um, and with the, the schedule that we got put with this year, um, in the league, it's, you know, I can't, I can't say that I'm going to have, I could put together a team of 20, two kids that are going to go play a JV schedule and play Lake Orion and play Southfield and Harper woods and Rochester and groves, you know, that and Bloomfield Hills that, um, I don't want, you know, kids to get banged up to the point where we don't have any depth there. So Mm -hmm. we, um, right now we're, I think we're going to try to do a freshman game or two only, um, just to see, you know, because, it's not always easy to get schedules fit for everybody, but it will primarily be a JV team in the subdivisions. Talk about your schedule. I mean, obviously, here's a little odd thing. No North Farmington on the schedule. I'm going like, what the heck is going on here? I mean, where's the far- I mean, like, where's the rivalry matchup here? So what's your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, um, I'm going to be as politically correct as I can be. Um I, you know, we get put the, we get given a schedule by the league and they decided to move us up yep. uh, in division. So if it was a division game, it wouldn't have been a problem. Um, and they crossed us over with Lake Orion and North at the, at the beginning. And mm-hmm. North had a game already scheduled for that. Weekend. Caledonia. I remember that. Yep. Yep. So um, they were, they had a contract and they were, um, 
they tried to get out of the contract and apparently Caledonia would not let them out. So, you know, ultimately you have a contract and uh, if you don't agree to break the contract or if you don't uh, agree to break it, it's, you know, a forfeit more yep. or less, from so, my understanding. So it's ends up being like, Hey, can we play this week? Can we play that week? And it's when you have contracts already signed and the league already kind of booked everything mm-hmm. for you in terms of uh, league games and crossovers, it's, um, you know, uh, kids are disappointed um, you know, it's kind of a weird thing. Like no other city rivalry game is not being played this year, but ours. So, and you guys get, you guys get to play Muskegon Reese puffer out of that whole thing. You know what I mean? So yes. And that's, they're a good know, team. They're, they, yeah. Yeah. And they're coming to us. We're actually kind of doing a cool thing. Uh, we're going to do a JV varsity double header. Really? Um, yes. So that was, the, that week before Labor Day, um, because ultimately I was, I you know, being cost efficient, like why have North Farmington drive to Caledonia and spend that money on gas and transportation and um, Muskegon Reese Puffers bringing everybody out to us when I, my, my big vote was why doesn't Caledonia play Muskegon Reese Puffer and they wouldn't play them. So, mm. um, so that's, yeah. Reese Puffer, you know, they reached out um, because, again, like this wasn't finalized until, I don't know, end of January or February. And it's like, well, now we got to find a game. Mm -hmm. And week two is not an easy week to always find, especially because those after all the coaching clinics, when everybody, all the coaches are meeting, like everyone's kind of getting filled up at that point. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you open up the year with Detroit Henry Ford. Um, interesting matchup. Don't know much about Detroit Henry Ford. Um, what's your thoughts about opening up with them? Um, so I know that we actually played them when I coached at Farmington way back. Um, played them in the playoffs when we got in at five and four and we played at their place. Um, I saw that they had an opening. Um, and I knew, you know, it, it'd be, I, I, at the time they were like a division three school. I think they were like 800 some kids. So I'm like, Oh, all right. They're not too, um, they're not too low. Like with the point system now, like you don't want to schedule, like we're division two, we don't want to schedule, you know, too low of, of a division. Um, and I know they're a quality program that wins games in their league. And obviously they play the Kings of the world and stuff like, uh, um, at times and, so I, you know, looking at, I figured they would be a five or six win team, um, based on who they had last year, um, in their, on their schedule, um, assuming nothing changed too drastically. Um, so that was a game again, like I said, like when we got our league schedule, it was fine games for week one and, uh, nine, and we already had nine filled. So they were open and we got that taken care of. We had reached out to, I don't know how many, uh, different schools to play and um that they they were the first to jump at it so Mm -hmm. um utica last year you guys lost to them um and it was a tough blow i mean like obviously utica's wins last year against oa schools so what's your thoughts about playing the chieftains week nine at swine art uh you know we like i said we booked that game last year it was a two-year deal and um you know i know that they play in that the Mac white yep. and uh, they play some of those red schools. So they're they're They definitely have um, a tough schedule and, you know, I figure they're a tough team and I, I want to prepare our players. Like we play Henry Ford cause they're a quality team. We play Reese Puffer. They're a quality team. Like I'm not, I don't want to, you know, go and put, you know, teams that aren't going to prepare us for the playoffs. Um, and, you know, last year Utica was a, a a one win team when we played them, and they they we were up on them and had a onside kick on us and a missed tackle, and they they ended up getting ahead of us by a score. Which, you know, when it, that happens in the fourth quarter, it's never good. So no. um, this year, obviously, you know, we we had never played them before. I don't even know if Farmers has ever played Utica before. Um, so we have a little bit of understanding of you know how they play, their physicality, um, and and whatnot, and you know it's. I'm I'm looking forward to it, not looking forward to the drive necessarily because we go to Lake Orion the previous week. So that's, that's my next you know, question. Lake Orion on their homecoming. 
Oh, that's great. I don't know. That means that's a 20 minute halftime too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So that's going to be interesting there. Um, talk about your division. I mean, the white, I mean, obviously, you know, of course you get A&T, Harper Woods, Groves, Boopia Hills and Rochester. So I'm going to break those teams down. Give your initial thoughts on each of those teams. Let's start with Rochester. I mean, like what's your thoughts on the Falcons? Uh, I know Eric Vernon, he's an Albion guy like myself played. I played with, uh, his brother played with me at, uh, at the same time. And he had graduated just, just prior to my arrival. Um, you know, he's a great coach, great guy. And I know they're, they, they have teams that are competitive and, and battle. And, you know, I, I've seen, I think I saw film on them from last year, uh, playing Utica, and uh, so I know kind of an idea of what they're doing. I know they're well coached and they're tough kids. And, you know, that that game should be should be a battle. And I think we go to them. So that's not a, an easy road trip out no. either. So mm-hmm. what about Bluefield Hills? <laughs> um, Bloomfield Hills, I'm pretty sure. I'm, well, I'm hoping they graduated their quarterback because we played them in 21 and we went to them, um, you know, and we kind of got down early but we ended up rushing for uh, I don't even know 250 275 yards um in that game and just had some big plays on on our defense that got us down early and caused some mistakes and it's that's a game that you know hopefully is some redemption for some of these kids that are seniors that were on the team that year because um you know we've played them before and I'm they're, they're another team that's, you know, got great scheme and great coaches that, you know, really put their kids in a position to be successful. Groves. Uh, Groves is Groves. I mean, I know they got some kids that uh, they got the lineman who's got D1 offers. They had, Avery Gotch, think, yep. The corner, uh, the corner who led the state in interceptions last year, I'm pretty sure. Yep. So, um, you know, they're – they're a multi-eye team. They like to shift. We played them back in 20, I believe. Um, and again, uh, you know, coach does a great job of scheming and trying to see where your weaknesses are. But they do a lot of the, a lot of stuff that, um, you know, you when you run the eye, you got to have road graders up front and great backs. And you know, they're 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 a tough team. And I'm sure you know, they'll be a team who's at the top of our league this year. Harper Woods. <laughs> <laughs> uh i know harper woods is new to the oaa um they're an, again a team who's got division one athletes already committed i think the I think coach's son is committed to michigan yep already. jacob olden yep yep and uh you know they're they're a team that i've never coached against so that that'll be fun it's always good to go against teams you haven't gone against um but i know like they're they're going to be tough fast physical um you know and and i think uh, they're a team who's expected to be top of our division as well. Cause they were all from what I was told juniors and sophomores last year yep. uh, for a good portion of it, at least. So they will be a tough team. And Southfield. Get another team with division one talent across the board. Um, you know, they got a uh, couple coaches that I, I know from my coaching history that um, I, they, they're not giving me Intel or anything, but just, no, they got some special players. I know they got a corner receiver and the quarterback that are all got offers. And I'm sure there's multiple, um, multiple kids that do. Um, I, I haven't played them as, as a and T before, uh, you know, back in the OAA white days when Lathrop and Southfield, you know, we, when they were the blue Jays, like it's, you know, that's, they're always a tough team and they're physical and um, well coached. And, you know, those kids are, are hungry and uh, another team that has a lot of kids coming back. Um, before I let you go, Coach, um, what is your expectations this year um, on the Falcons? <clears throat> I, you know, I, I think I say it every year. Like, I never give a, a number as far as how many wins, I think, or losses. It's I know we've got, we've got some kids and uh, that are going to do special things for us this year. I think we once we get pads on and, and really can narrow down some of the positions that um, – we have kind of question marks about or, or spots to fill, then it'll be a lot easier to get a, a better grip on, you know, how, how great can we be? I know our kids have worked hard, um, you know, being uh, our weight weights program and, and conditioning program through the winter and, and summer have been, uh, you know, 
kids are getting and buying into it. Um, so that, that really helps pay off in the end. Um, I think, uh, you know, it, it's really big, big, uh, big a part, or uh, what a big part will be is our senior leadership. Cause this group has got a handful of kids that have been playing since sophomores. Um, and then some kids that are, you know, just one or two years or just a year in a varsity. So, um, it's about you know, how the kids come together and, and play together and play hard and are disciplined. Pharmacy coach Jason Albright, um, thank you for joining us in the podcast this week. Um, good luck this season. I will see you at media day. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Thank you really much. God bless. So when you look at the season, you know, you look at Farmington, a lot of expectations. I'm very curious to see how they do this year. So we'll see what happens. Everybody right, want to sign off here. Um, Got a couple new coaches coming up, ne- coming in next week to talk to talk away football. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information. Um, we're also um, keeping on the Farm the Girls basketball situation over there. So once we have that, we will have it on the blog as well. So all right, everybody, I'm signing off here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Take care, and I will see you then. God bless you.